Podcast. I am your host, Maritza Perez. We are here today with an incredible entrepreneur. He is a U.S. citizen that has lived most of his life in South Africa. As an entrepreneur, he has built a platform for long-term private investors. His, co his corporate life includes a good contract with an investment company. He has amazing hobbies like nonfiction reading. He keeps fit a competitive athlete and enjoys regular travel. Today, we're going to discuss more what his tech startup company is and um, how he builds markets and foreign lands and enjoying traveling at the same time. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Maritza. That is a very nice introduction and um, a great privilege to be on your show. It is an honor to me to have you with us today. So tell me, Carl, what is your accident and why it's not an accident? Well, the story is my father um, was very academic. And so he went to the US, actually to MIT, who's studying with my mom. And I was born in Boston. Um, and we lived there for a while and then so but most and then my parents came back to south africa and for most of my life i've been in south africa um i've tried to get to america a couple of times the first time i was about to leave to go and live in america and i got married so that's well that one and then the second time i was ready to go to america a COVID came and once again i found myself back in south africa <laughs> so um yes yeah, so the relationship with the us has always been a a good one for me and um and i've traveled to america i've actually been to orlando and uh, to florida and i've been to disney so I've, I've, I've actually i've traveled quite a few times to the u.s um but most of my career over the last 20 years has been um in the investment space uh, sort of data analyst area and i've always noticed that the the big corporations have these incredible facilities, but they're very expensive and, and you take and they need staff. I mean, that's a very expensive thing to run. And I always wondered, well, what could the private investor access? And that was really where my journey started with um, my, my platform for long term private investors. Yes, I, I see that. And then that was one of the things that uh, caught my attention, um, what you do and um how you do it because i know that um you work remotely and um let's talk about how you explore the country where you work and uh tell me about what is the culture and um what it what is you know the that um for for somebody that works remotely kind of tell tell us how you do it? Well, that's a good question. Although I am a US citizen that lives in South Africa, I travel quite a bit in South Africa and um, and also have been overseas recently. But I mean, let's, let's think about it. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of expats who live in America and would love to explore the, in America, the, the, the country they're now working in. So the whole idea of traveling and um, and working at the same time, but luckily we you know a lot of remote works available. So yeah, so I do travel quite a bit domestically, and but there are quite a few tricks to it. It's not you know although one's traveling, you still need to show up for work. You know you, you still need to be at the meetings and get the projects done and meet your deadlines and assignments. Um, Yes, so that's very much uh, my experience. I, I wondered what question you'd like to ask. 
So when when you say um, you are remotely, but you're still working, right? So it, it, you mentioned something very important and you say you still have to show up. So why don't we tell this, the audience what why being, you're kind of like a digital nomad that um, you travel also for pleasure. Uh, like if you want to work in another city or something, you work from there, but you still, you take work with you instead of, you know, going to work. Yes. So I think the, the most important thing is if one is going to do it, you, you know, you've got to be very aware of the fact that your client or your employer still wants you to employ. Um, the first thing is if I'm away, I normally let the manager know that I'm not away. And I can tell you an interesting story about that. Um, I went to last year, I went to a world championship in Portugal, but I didn't want my colleagues to know you know, I don't think it was fair career to, to tell people that I'm, that I'm traveling all over the world. So I, uh, but I told my manager and the head of operations knew, but otherwise nobody knew. And uh, while I was in Portugal, we got, I got an email um, from the security to the manager to say, well, where's Carl's computer? It looks like his computer's in Portugal. He's supposed <laughs> to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I managed a lot because she knew I was away. So I think the first thing and the important lesson there is, although we're traveling and we are showing up, one does at least need to disclose it to the authority, you know. Um, yes. You know, I think that, that, that's the first thing. And, and you, you keep that communication open, but you still show up to work, you still do your work. Mm -hmm. And um, one once the hours of work are done, then you explore the places where you go to. Yeah, so well, that's the big opportunity. Um, so although my colleagues don't necessarily know I'm traveling, my manager does. Um, so the big thing about it is flights, you know, because once you're on a flight, you can't, you can't attend meetings. Um, and also the most expensive part is arguably the flight. So, you know, that needs to be planned quite well in advance to get take advantage of reasonable price on tickets and um, also to be traveling when there's a bit of a clear spot in one's day. Um, so that's a, a very important thing. The other thing is, you know, you are working, so one would want to choose a place to stay that is at least got a nice um, sort of, well, you want self-catering, but you also want something that's got a nice table that you can work at so that, you know, you, you come across as somebody who's getting the work done. Um, and Airbnb is very good for that. Um, I use them a couple of times. And um, and then, of course, always make sure that you have backup Wi-Fi as well as where you're going Wi-Fi. So there's always two facilities available. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean... Uh, an interesting story is I was I got to an Airbnb recently and you know they're often run by families or private people and they weren't there to expect me and I had a meeting but because I had data with me I just did the meeting in the car I sort of let them know look I'm waiting outside and you know just got my computer open and the meeting went on but I mean <laughs> you know the thing is you you got to be ready to to um, perform um so yeah so so mobile data is very important as you know the you need, one needs good data um and I, yes yeah you need to be responsible and that's when you mm -hmm. say you you still have to show and um tell us um foreign travel what are do's and don'ts of um how how did you will say to go to um to a different country what since you like to travel so much what are some do's and don'ts of traveling that you can tell the audience well first again flights are important because now you're <clears throat> not just flying two hours to washington you know <laughs> from florida you like uh for a couple of hours and also the timelines are different so one really wants to make sure that um you know that the flight is an appropriate time um and there's probably i think when one tells the manager or the supervisor that you're going 
they probably need to warn them that that particular day you will not make a meeting because you know but but if you warn well in advance it's it's acceptable and then with timeline differences remember you're still working there you know your employer doesn't you know if you're going to be up at till 11 o'clock at night or up early then you, you need to expect that because it's um it's their time and, and, and they're the employer so you, you can't sort of let them know that it's too early in the morning and you can't be there <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you need to uh, you need to adjust um and then of course yeah and, and yeah so so i think yeah important that you just manage the time and the timelines and the rest and and once again really good to be in a sort of self-catering environment where you can you know you can at least meals and things are not um, restrictive um okay. one important thing to consider uh -huh. and this is this is going to surprise you there's a lot of uh self-help books um always say that it's a good idea to sort of live a good life some you know treat yourself because it allows you to live the life that you you're aspiring to so one of the things I do is often on a weekend, I might move for two nights to a really nice venue and spend the weekend in somewhere a little bit more expensive and nearby, but treat myself to something. So, you know, the, the, the argument is always, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, at least experience it and know what it is that yes. you're trying to achieve. So that is also something to consider. Um, you know, as you are away and you spent the money and you've done gone to all that amount of trouble to maybe spend a few nights in a very nice venue. Um, once again, it can be an Airbnb. It's just a very nice area. Or maybe treat yourself to a famous restaurant or a, go to a famous beach or, you know, there, there's there are a lot of, uh, and just remind yourself that it is possible to to do these things. Yes, and you were also uh, mentioning when we were talking before, uh, you were mentioning that when you travel, you not only go to the iconic places, but you like to immerse in the culture because that is something that you love. You love to leave the culture of where you are. So you like to go to places where the locals are. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yes, um, a little bit along the lines of what I've just said is you know, because you're doing Airbnb and you decided to spend a couple of weeks or two weeks at a, at a foreign place, you know, you can book a place that is in the suburbs of the people. You're not staying at a hotel on the beachfront. You're staying in an environment. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is because it's Airbnb and you're self-catering, you're sort of going to the shops and you're in the spas and, the, and you know, getting food that they eat. Um, which is, you, there are always surprises, which is the very interesting thing. Um, I mentioned I went to Portugal last year for a, a, a race, and the the island was actually Madeira, and I didn't realize that when I got there, they said, well, where are you from? And I said, well, I live in South Africa. And they said, oh, and I didn't realize that after the Second World War, a lot of people from Madeira, because it was after the Second World War and there was no money and no food and was, you know, the war had really hurt the economy. A lot of people from Madeira came to live in South Africa. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so they would like, say, oh, my uncle lives, you know, in, uh, and they tell me the suburb and, you know, and, and, you know, my brother's still there and, you know, it's like really interesting. So, so those are the sort of surprises that you get, you know, when you travel. Um, yeah. And then you you find uh, people from all over the world uh, to different places that you go to. And then also the topic of your meeting, my accent is no accident. You yes. can be traveling in, I don't know, let's say you decide to travel around America and you uh, Grand Canyon. And then you hear somebody speaking and you know that that accent can only be from Colombia. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And then you go and see the person and you say, oh, you know. <laughs> But, but you know, because you can hear from the accent that they're, you know that's that's the people I know would would you know would speak that way, you know. So yes, they're, they're always surprises. I mean, it's just I think so. I think the real message is that one can work and 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 and, and enjoy uh, and explore. Um, and the thing is, you're still working, so you it's it's I should say less expensive because you are still working. You know, it's. Uh, 
So you are earning at the same time. And then you are also able to highlight differences in cultures and enjoy them and celebrate them in and and learn from I and how other people do different things. Well, yes, and I, I think it'd be a, it's, it's a great pity to be an expat in a foreign country and they never really get the chance to explore the country where you're working, you know. Um, yes. And, and look, is, it does take, sorry. Yes, it is amazing. You, 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 you totally, I totally agree with you. Yeah, and, um, I, and you know, look, it does take effort. And, you know, you, you do have to work harder because he's traveling and, you know, things. But it is possible as well. I just think the experience and the learning and uh, is worth the effort. It's worth the effort. Exactly. So um, there are more things uh, that you are doing in live. Um, like, tell us about your tech startup that you are working on. Well, as I mentioned when we started, uh, I always wondered, you know, working for this big investment company, you know, how, how, what do pri what do private investors do? Because there's no way they could afford either the facilities or even. The... And so I started to explore, and then I thought, well, you know, once you create a facility that allows um, long-term private investors to um, to to you know off of resources that they wouldn't know about and i must say since i started there are so many well i've got about i think on my site I've got about 18 resources and they grow all the time i mean things i've never known about if i hadn't really started to explore um them and then the other thing is you know um we we live in quite an isolated world um, and investments need, has needs information so you know, and and also one often, I mean, one of the biggest growing cities uh, in, in 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 particularly in the U.S. is is sort of commu uh, um, private communities, because people aren't too sure, you know, what is you know what's coming off the media and how accurate is it, and you know which piece should I know. In the meantime, an investment landscape is highly complex and um, and always changing. So I just think if one could create well, I have a community. I just need to get people onto it. Um, <laughs> to, to offer people that community where they can form private groups and just see what's going on and ask questions and just try and sort of get some perspective on on the media and what we're learning and you know and to what extent is it affecting the investment landscape. Um, and I do say, look, I, 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 it's a very very complex environment. Um, so. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, I can only offer opportunities um, for people. So very much my motto is, you know, you know, uh, informed decision making. To what extent can I get information that helps my decisions? And and what are those opportunities that you're creating? Well, well, the I mean, the big thing really is the the whole. Um, growth of private communities in the United States, all well, over the world, but particularly in the United States, um, the growth of um, platforms and platforms are growing all over the world. Um, the growth of things like blockchain, it's, it's opening the opportunity for the individual to create something um, and anything really. I mean, you, you could have the uh, beach volleyball in Florida, you know, and there's just so much you could offer, you know, um, if you're traveling to say, well, I'm going to um, Miami uh, and I wondered if I could find some volley volleyball players at which beach. And, you know, so in a community like that, they, you know, the guys wouldn't say, well, you know, we meet on this beach on Saturday afternoon, why don't you pop past, you, you know, and, and maybe you want some Florida beach volleyball uh, clothing, you know, and, you know, so there's just so much that um, a simple platform like that could offer. Uh, yeah, so that, to me, there's a lot of opportunity being open in because of um, uh, yes. medium. Yes, and, in, and um, 
you have uh, you're trying to create a community to hold all these um, investments correctly. Am I correct? So, so my platform offers. Um, well, I, I I'm a great believer in the Microsoft product Power BI, and it is Microsoft, as we know, a, a, a very good brand, and that's growing very exclusively. So I'm sort of saying, well, you know, as a introductory, you know, maybe people would like to try it out. Um, uh, so that is the. So I actually uh, building a demonstration. The demonstration is already there, but every week I add a few more slides to my demonstration and. Yeah, every it's growing all the time. And then so I'm just saying to people, this is what you could do if you really that passionate, you want to own your own sort of facility. And then the community is really trying to get, you know, offering people the opportunity to share ideas uh, and to, to create their own private communities. And then I also have at the moment a whole lot of suppliers that people can use. And those suppliers are interesting. I mean, Yahoo Finance and you know, Microsoft Excel and, you know, there's just so much uh, Bloomberg simulators. There's just so much out there that is, um, you know, available, a lot of it for free, which is interesting, you know, or very reasonably priced. Um, yes. The big problem is data, but then a lot of data is also free if you if you can take um, a delayed data. If you want real-time data, all the things a bit. So, so I'm really sort of saying, but guys, there are a lot of things that you can that are available. Um, and then I mean, people can look at my site and say, okay, yeah, but I mean, I can do this, you know. Yes, yes, that is incredible. And um, what um, we already talk about what approach you to build a business, but how can people get in touch with you so that they can know more about your business? Well, um, yes, well, there, there are a sort of couple of dimensions to that. Um, the first thing is if you look, if you actually go to my LinkedIn process, it's actually I'm, a, I'm there as a coach, not as anything else. Um, and yeah, so, so to build a platform, let's say you wanted to build a beach volleyball in Florida. Um, there are skills and, you know, to me, and I know I've read a lot of books about American industry, everybody thinks you're going to start this huge platform and do crowdfunding and make a lot of money, but that's not actually my approach at all. My approach is to start, start something that's very minimal, viable, easy to create, build it yourself, get the skills yourself, do it yourself, you know what I mean? And then the yeah. costs are low and you can grow slowly and the risks of success are much higher. Um, and, well, not the risks are higher. The chance of success <laughs> is much higher. Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, I can certainly help on that. And then, of course, investors, if they you know, want to ask questions about my community or, um, you know, what I can do, or maybe even on Power BI, maybe they're interested in that. But I, I do say, you know, I'm only really into the introductory Power BI because the industry is just so, so complex. Um, yeah, so on my site, there would be uh, uh, investmentorchard.com. There will be a contact us, contact me, and, you know, I'll get the email. Okay. Um, or they join the community. I'll see them send me a message on that as well. Yes. And um, today, where is Carl? Where are you today? Are Where you... am I today? Where am yeah. I today? Now, today yeah. I'm in at home in Johannesburg. Okay. So yeah, I thought um, I had caught I had caught you somewhere else. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do travel a lot. But it's, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's sort of like a treat if I, if I might. I, I think is that the right word? Uh, you treat yourself to a, yes, you treat yourself to mm. different things. Yes, and, and is so there traveling any... is a, treating myself to do something. You know what I mean? And it's, yes, uh, exactly. Well, there um the the newest generations um uh we call them millennials and generation z want to have a life like yours like yours uh, being able to have a place where they can work and a place where they can travel and do different things so um in summary tell tell us um what are the do's and don'ts of traveling when while working 
Yeah, so, so in summary, what we've discussed is, first of all, I, be, I don't believe in telling my colleagues that I'm traveling, but I let the management know. Um, so there are no surprises if something happens. Um, and then, of course, flights are often the most expensive part. So one really needs to plan them, not only because of cost, but also in terms of um, being available for your job or your project. And then, um, you know, when you get there, I, I think one really would prefer to keep, once again, for costs and to have a nice environment to work in. You know, one would want probably a sort of an a Airbnb apartment where there's a nice table to work on, a nice environment. And then, um, you know, I like to split it. So if, so during the week, I'd probably be staying somewhere very reasonable and inexpensive. And then on the weekend, I might treat myself to something um, more exclusive and, um, and and a different place to explore. And then maybe come back the following week and then the next week and go somewhere else. So, um, yeah, so, so those are, two, I think, and then of course the data, you, you, you do need to make sure that, um, you have very reliable, you know, the best reliable data, um, available. And once again, you need to research that so that, you know, like, once again, as a cost. Yeah. And that you have bandwidth to get into, into work and, and have all the and yeah. technological help that you need. And then um, often people offer facilities often don't have very good data. So you might need to supplement it when you are doing, you know, in the evenings when you're on your cell phone, then you probably can use their data. But if you're on something important during the day, you might need to use another facility that's more reliable and faster. Yes, you might have to um, make a research before you travel to the country if or or the place you're going to and see if they um have any offerings otherwise you'll have mm -hmm. to take it yourself incredible so you work with it with the, with investors you travel around the world you're in a tech company helping um build and you help build platforms and as a hobby you are an, uh, in, uh, an athlete it is incredible. I mean, you have all kind, all sorts of things that any entrepreneur does, uh, different things. And, and But I like the part of it, being an athlete. How do you keep yourself fit? Um, well, first, you know, the, the exercise I do is jumping and swimming. So I can fit it in when it suits me. You know, I don't have to um, meet for other people to play with. So that definitely helps. Um, but you know, the, you know, it's a very much a holistic approach. It's the exercise is not the exercise in itself. It, it, it's basically, um, they need to, uh, having a, a, a platform might sound available and yes, it is available and people can definitely do it, but extremely stressful. Um, I'll be, I'll, before I started, I was reading a couple of books and they warned me that things go wrong. They do. Um, and uh, it's all tech and tech does go wrong. And one needs, needs to be patient and tolerant and just go with it. But the, the, the health and the fitness definitely helps just carry that. Um, the the stress. Yeah. yeah. And also you're putting yourself out there. <laughs> you know, that in <laughs> itself is stressful, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, once again, if you're going to start a beach volleyball in Florida, you know, everybody's going to know who you are, you know, and everybody's going to know about your site. You know, you really are putting yourself out there. And if something goes wrong, everybody's going to know. Um, so, yeah, so, so there's sort of health and fitness competitive because I have ability, but it's, it's also just about uh managing stress ah uh, excellent okay carl and do you have anything else that you would like to tell to our um audience yes i think if you are going to pursue a platform you know one needs to read eh? I, I do a lot of reading and a wide variety of reading um it definitely helps it gives you ideas it allows you to get creative um and and it's well known that uh, 
entrepreneurs read. So, you know, I do encourage um, what I do is also a good idea is that I, I take a break at least once a day and go and have a cup of coffee for half an hour. And then that's when I read. And I just take it easy for half an hour, an hour and read. And, and you'll be surprised how much reading one gets through uh, just uh, on the daily coffee break. Yes, I know. I know I have myself like five books here that I am exploring and I go to in different because I work social media and uh, podcast guesting and um, I have all kinds of books that uh, help me explore different things. So you don't know absolutely everything. You might be an expert, but you might need help. Uh, and the books is probably the best way to find them. And amazing ideas come from those books. Yes. And allows your creativity to um, kind of like that switch on on your creativity too. Definitely. I mean, I've read pages in books and been so excited about what I've just read. <laughs> Just can't wait to get home and to try it out. You know, yeah. So it definitely does increase the add to the creativity. Yes, Carl, it's been a pleasure to have you in my podcast. This has been amazing, and I hope everybody uh, got a lot of insights of what it is to travel and how uh, to contact you if any investor is interested in in Carl. I'll put all the information in the description and. Uh, See you later. Hi, it's Maritza here. If you like this episode of My Accent is No Accident podcast and would like to listen more like this, subscribe wherever you're listening to it or watching it. Leave us a nice review and share with your friends, family, and network. Thanks for listening. Hello.